Thank you for tuning into the Gift Up podcast. We're continuing on with our draft grades, and I'm back here again talking about the Lions. And I'm going to put a rubber stamp on this once and for all. I'm going to start with free agency and work my way down through the draft and explain why this was a wasted offseason for the Lions. And I don't want to hear about rebuilding being an excuse. The Miami Dolphins were in year one of their rebuild last season and went 10 and 6. Your organization either knows what they're doing or they don't know what they're doing, and the Lions don't have a clue. The Dolphins hired a really good coach in Brian Flores, and the Lions hired a bum coach in Dan Campbell. And honestly, that's the closest comparison I can think of between Dan Campbell and the Big Lebowski. They're both bums. The Lions might as well have just brought back Jim Caldwell because at least they won nine games with him. They'll be lucky if they win four this upcoming season. Now let's start with the free agent moves. The best move that they made was retaining Romeo Aquara. Everything else they did isn't going to have an impact and isn't going to help a rebuild in any way, shape, or form. Michael Brockers is an overhyped player because of his time playing next to Aaron Donald. He's really not that good and gets blocked way too easily. Tyrell Williams and Brashad Perryman aren't going to do anything at receiver either. Perryman is average at best, and Tyrell Williams might as well not even be on the roster because he disappears in games. Then at quarterback, they downgrade with Goff, who will bring the team down with turnovers and stagnation. The Lions' excuse for this is that they can take a quarterback next year with the picks they acquired in the trade. Well, that's wishful thinking. It's not easy to find a quarterback, and they had two viable options this year in Justin Fields or Mac Jones, and they passed on them for Panay Sewell. So it's one thing to call me an idiot because, yeah, it's true, I have no NFL credentials, but you can't sit there and say Bill Belichick is an idiot, and he felt it was worth taking Mac Jones at 15, and the Bears felt it was worth taking Justin Fields at 11. If the Lions are really planning for their future, they should have grabbed one of these guys to be their future quarterback but I honestly think they believe they can win with Jared Goff down the line. Jared Goff is nothing more than a system quarterback that was able to put up misleading stats because McVay had guys running wide open with his masterful play call. Anthony Lynn is nowhere near as good as McVay or the Shanahan's of the coaching world, so good luck with that. Once Goff gets pressured a little bit, it's going to be all downhill. Now jumping over to the draft, I give it a C+. It would have been a solid B to B+, if they didn't waste their first pick on Panay Sewell. Any game that I watched, particularly against Auburn in California, his technique was very shoddy. He's got poor footwork and an unsturdy stance. NFL pass rushers are going to embarrass him. And you know what? Let's look at it from a different perspective. Let's say Sewell ends up being an okay player at the NFL level. It's still a bad pick because the Lions should have known this draft is littered with tackle talent. They could have gotten their future quarterback, an offensive weapon, or a top defender with this pick and still got a starting caliber tackle later on. The value just isn't there with Sewell. Now, rounds two through four, I actually can say some good things about, even though I felt like they overvalued the defensive tackles they took. In the second round, they took Levi Omu Zurike, and in the third, they took Alan McNeil. When I watched the film, both guys have the size to become NFL cloggers and solid at doing that, but that's where it ends. They didn't show anything in the pass rush department and weren't consistent in moving guys back. The smart move here would have been to take Tyler Shelvin in the third round but they overvalued these two guys. The positive about these two picks is that they can clog while Trey Flowers and Oquara hopefully get to the quarterback. Flowers has been disappointing though, so I don't expect much from him. In the third round, they also drafted Ifitu Melifanu from Syracuse. He had pretty good film. He didn't get exposed that much in coverage, so the mold is there for him to be a lockdown corner. I did feel like they got some value with that pick. And in the fourth round, they took Amon Ross St. Brown. He's going to be a one-dimensional project. Hopefully, he will be able to take the top off of defense and master his route running skills, but he's not very physical. This is a complimentary piece that I can get behind, though. It made some sense. But then the last two picks I felt were a waste with Derek Barnes and Jamar Jefferson. There were a lot better players available that they could have taken. Kerry Vincent Jr., Patrick Johnson, and Jonathan Cooper, just to name a few. So that wraps it up for the Lions. I was very disappointed in this offseason as a whole. And saying they're in the midst of a rebuild is a poor excuse. Even if you're rebuilding, you still have to make some decent moves. And I just don't see it. It's more than about getting flash. It's about getting value. And yes, Devonta Smith would have been better value than Panay Sewell. That's the bottom line. It's got nothing to do with just the receiver position. It's got to do with value and passing on star potential players. Sewell is not. I don't care how many awards he got. And I certainly don't care what the experts think. I watched the film. I got a read on the guy, and I'm telling you he's going to be a bust. You guys obviously think otherwise, but it was a waste to pick. So with that, make sure to hit the like button, 
share the videos and subscribe. I'm done talking about the lines for a while.